Welcome to the show, guys. Happy Monday, and congrats to all of the fantasy football champions. I know there's one game left tonight. I understand Chubb is playing Najee Harris. I think Najee has the better of the game, but we're going to have to see on that. But listen, guys, I know your championships are done. We're going to talk about the studs and sucks here for your championship weeks. The final episode, diving into these guys that crap the bed and the guys that crushed it guys like Amon or St. Brown, Jamar Chase. We want to praise these guys. We want to give them some recognition for their amazing performance and also highlight some places where we may have gone wrong or the Kinshipses have really gone wrong. And that way we can better tailor for next year. Okay. So the last time we're going to rip into the sucks of the week, including guys like Dalvin Cook who crapped the bed this week. We're going to dive into it right here, right now. Now, before we get into this show, guys, head on over to manscaped.com. Get yourself a lawnmower 3.0 trimmer or a 4.0. Manscaped.com. Save yourself 20%. Use promo code SHOWERLINE. Go do that right now, guys. Treat yourself. And, of course, we're doing draws, compliments of Pristine Auction. Head on over to pristineauction.com. Use code SWAGLINE, okay? SWAGLINE will get you into all of the draws. We've got an amazing Dalvin Cook helmet as well giveaway. Even though he crapped the bed in the championships, it's still a pretty cool helmet to own. So pristineauction.com, use promo code SWAGLINE. You're entered for all draws moving forward, all right? So if you're new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe. 16 rounds is coming very soon, 2022. Going to be doing a pre-order for that very soon, so be aware of that as well. Guys, the season, I can't believe it to say this is done. So we got to start thinking forward into next season. But I wanted to kind of recap the studs and sucks of this final week here, this week 17, this championship week for a lot of people, all right? So let's start with the quarterback position. Joe Burrow crushing it. Russell Wilson finally having himself a good game. Tom Brady, Dak Prescott, Kyler Murray, Mac Jones, Josh Allen, Pat Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, and Trey Lance all having themselves a great week. But so who crapped the bed? Now, overall... I think most quarterbacks did pretty well. I guess the only person that really crept to bed in my eyes is Matt Ryan, just under seven points. Relatively unacceptable. Now, he did get a touchdown, negated the one that he was trying to run in there. Uh, he came in aggressive, looked good, got into the defender's face, and I think that <laughs> that touchdown was negated, unfortunately. A lot of hype from Matt Ryan, which is relatively surprising. Uh, but, yeah, I think he's the one that really crept to bed. And Tua Tagovailoa, Tagovailoa, whatever his name is, 4.3 points. 4.3 points, really unacceptable here uh, for a guy that should be a franchise guy, a starter on Miami. So most of these guys did as per expected for the most part. But overall, you know, um, you know, there's a couple guys that, like even Cam Newton, I think. What did he do here? Uh, did he point five points for Cam Newton? So... There's again, I, I wouldn't have started Cam Newton anyway, right? So the guys that have performed well, the Josh Allen's of the world, Tom Brady's, Dak Prescott, Russell Wilson, all those guys, even Justin Herbert had himself a decent game with uh, 17 or just under 18 points, did well. So can't really knock on the quarterback sweep. What you saw was really what you got. Now, running back position, this is where we had some issues here. Uh, Rashad Penny, actually, let's, let's praise the guys as well. Rashad Penny, Daryl Williams do well. Daryl Williams got the volume. Simply predicated that Clyde Edwards, useless Clyde Edwards layer was out. It happens with Daryl Williams, 25.7 points. Boston Scott, believe it or not, 24.6 points. Devin Singletary having himself a good week here in the championships. Some really uh, odd names in here in the top mix here. Who would have thought Daryl Williams, uh, Boston Scott, and Devin Singletary, top four running backs uh, in the week, in the final championship week. Now, mind you, again, we still have the Monday night game to go. Uh, Stevenson from the New England Patriots finishing top five here. A.J. Dillon, Elijah Mitchell, Alvin Kamara having a bit of a bounce back week with 21 points. Jarrett Patterson, who's that guy? Washington, 20.8 points. Austin Eckler staying consistent as they come this year, 20.2 points. David Montgomery, 20, and then .1. All right, Jonathan Taylor in the championships, 18.4 points. Not bad. So who crapped the bed at the running back position? That's that's what we got to talk about. Now, DeAndre Swift absolutely crapped the bed. Very terrible here, 5.9 points. Unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable for a guy who's drafted relatively high. Michael Carter, 7.3, but no, he was like my RB5. Wasn't expecting much out of him. 7.3 points. He had that one big run for like 50 yards. After that, really, or before that even, didn't do anything. Cornell Patterson started to fall off near the end of the year. 7.2 points. He crapped the bed. But here's where it gets really, really sad. Two running backs that 
should have done a lot better. Absolutely did not do as anywhere near where they should have done, considering they're both first round picks and they should be absolutely ashamed of themselves. I'm just not in the mood for yelling today. I'm not in the mood to, to argue. Maybe I'll do it on my Instagram at Fantasy Football Council. So go follow there. But Zeke Elliott, four points. Four points from Zeke Elliott. This is his guy, top five pick, right? Dalvin Cook, a guy I told you to avoid, 4.3 points. 4.3 points out of Dalvin Cook. Nine attempts, 13 yards, 1.4 yards per carry. Absolutely should be ashamed of himself. Okay, now Javante Williams didn't have a good game, 4.2 points. But again, we understand the Melvin Gordon factor there. Uh, but really, I mean, between Dalvin Cook and Zeke Elliott, I'm looking at this really, really unacceptable. And it's really going to make me not want them even more for next year. Uh, Ronald Jones, I think he got hurt. I'm not sure what happened. I, I didn't watch all that game. At 3.7 points, he was primed to have himself a good game. So I would say the suck of the week, as much as I dislike Dalvin Cook for fantasy, I got to go with Zeke Elliott here. I mean, Zeke Elliott is a guy that should be performing on a top level. I mean, he's not hurt. You know, he's he's in his veteran. Like, he's not even, like, he's not even, I don't know if he's a, I consider him a veteran, I guess. He's been in the, the league long enough, but he's not old, right? Like, he's still got a lot of juice in him, apparently, but just not performing where he should. They should be ashamed of themselves, okay? So, Zeke Elliott, Dalvin Cook, shame, 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 shame. All right, let's move on to the wide receiver position. And this is exactly why I tell you guys to wait on wide receiver because there's a ton of value. Jamar Chase, 55.6 points, like three touchdowns, 266 yards. This guy's breaking records, okay? I mean, this this goes to show you he was ranked like 60th on the consensus rankings. The owner St. Brown was like 70th. Nobody talked about the owner St. Brown except for me, the counselor. And in the 16-round draft solution, 35.4 points, second amongst wide receivers, excluding the Monday night game here. We're talking Sunday games. DK Metcalf finally having him a good good game. Devontae Adams, Braxton Berrios from the Jets. Cooper Cup, J- uh, Jacoby Myers, Hunter Renfro, who's been solid all year, have in my league. Uh, Wilkerson, Christian Wilkerson, New England, and uh, Cyril Grayson from Tampa Bay. Grayson having that touchdown with Antonio. By the way, did you see that Antonio Brown thing, man? What's going on with Antonio Brown? I mean, you're talking about a guy who who literally um, had his career going down, right, in real reality, had some off-field, a lot of off-field issues for that matter. And the Buccaneers, who are a Super Bowl-bound team, right, they could win the Super Bowl and he could get himself a ring here. He gets the opportunity to, you know, be with a Super Bowl contender, Tom Brady taking him under his wing after, again, all that drama. And then I don't know what happened. And again, I don't know the details, but... He's got an opportunity to be part of this franchise, part of this team, part of this organization. I guess something didn't go his way, whether he was benched by Arians. We don't know. Takes off his jersey and his uniform and, and his uh, his gear and waves to the Jets crowd and leaves the arena, the field. I mean, I don't, I don't understand the thought process here. This guy, clearly a couple things. Ego, obviously a big thing. He's obviously got ego issues. Another thing with him is that... He's got a lot of money, so he's kind of hit that fame. Maybe he's like, I've had enough. I don't need it. Uh, maybe it's, you know, he's got hit in the head a lot of times. But there's definitely like an ego, you know, some sort of mental mental issue going on here that needs to be resolved, right? Uh, but leaving your team back there is just, it's immature. It's cowardly. And uh, that's all I'm going to say about it. But, yeah, Antonio Brown, big letdown also for fantasy, I got to say. I'd say he's one of the sucks that we get wide receiver, which we'll get to because he was in a prime position to succeed. Then you've got, um, we got Grayson, come, uh, Grayson coming in here and getting 20 points and getting the touchdown that should have gone towards most likely Antonio Brown's way. So, uh, Cyril Grayson, top 10 amongst wide receivers here. Now, who are the guys that crap the bed? There's a ton of them, and I don't want to get into all of them, but I'll give you some of the guys that really kind of jump out at me at the screen. Now, CeeDee Lamb, 8.1 points. This was a guy that was drafted in the third round ahead of all other um, Cowboys wide receivers. Now, we know that Michael Gallup is out for the season, torn ACL or MCL or whatever, but CeeDee Lamb should have just done a lot better. 8.1 points, not a guy I was targeting. Allen Robinson, theoretically the wide receiver one on his team. 7.5, 7.5, didn't get it done. A.J. Brown, 6.1 points. This guy was drafted in the first round by the Kinsheepses. I told you, stay away from A.J. Brown. Don't trust him. Don't think the volume's going to be there, especially with Julio Jones on a run for his team. Even with Derrick Henry out, 6.1 points in the championship, as I, as I predicted, okay? Antonio Brown, 5.6 points. Unacceptable. And leaving the field on your fantasy football playoffs, pure ignorant. That guy should never be on any other NFL team 
let alone, you know, never mind fantasy team, right? He shouldn't be on any team at all. DJ Moore, 5.4 points. Very big disappointment here. And I'd love to get in the comments if you're here, if you're watching on YouTube, which guy busted for you. I'm sure a lot of people started Antonio Brown, understandably so. I had him in a DFS lineup. Supposed to have a boom game, just didn't get it done, okay? So I would say the suck of the week at wide receiver is definitely Antonio Brown, and I would give A.J. Brown. The Browns definitely crapped the bed. Jalen Waddle, only 7.7 points. He was supposed to have a good game. Didn't. Coming off some boom weeks prior, people had expectations, understandably so. So the highlight, the studs are definitely Jamar Chase and Amonra St. Brown, a guy that all 16 rounders should have had stashed on the bench. I was high on Jamar Chase as well as another wide receiver to stash this season, okay? So, uh, yeah, wide receiver proves to you you can wait. Moving on to tight end, Noah Fant crushed it, 21.2 points. Rob Gronkowski, Mark Andrews, Mark Andrews, 14.9 points. Travis Kelsey had a good game, 13.4. Who crapped the bed here at the tight end position? And to be honest with you, tight ends, again, I don't have any high expectations for any of these guys, but there could have been better performances from... Evan Ingram, 2.2 points. Really, really pathetic how bad he has been. And George Kittle, 4.5 points. Completely and utterly unacceptable from two tight ends that should have got it done. Now, Mike Gusecki, 9.1, under 10 points. Uh, Kyle Pitts, 8.9 points. Really unacceptable from guys that are great talent physically in a good position to succeed and just didn't get it done. So what have we learned from this year, guys? I mean, let's break it down. You wait on wide receiver. We saw the value here, right? You load up on those running backs. You got to have that depth at that position, and you get that most consistent behavior out of the quarterbacks. Exactly what I talk about in the 16-round draft solution. And this will be available for pre-order very, very soon, guys. And again, I'm over the moon excited about 2022 fantasy football as we wrap this year up. And I, and I like this time of year because I get to focus on building out 2022 content and also start focusing on NFL content like NFL actually watching the NFL without fantasy and just watch the games and there's less games right when the playoffs come on there's less games it's do or die these guys got to win if not they're eliminated and that kind of adds to the excitement of just watching regular football without the fantasy aspect my joy will still will be playing DFS as well so now if you are new to the channel guys we're going to be pounding out the 2022 content like crazy make sure you guys subscribe thumbs up and I appreciate you guys and uh yeah make sure you're subscribed following my antics on Instagram I'm out